Intel's new Core i9 13900K Raptor Lake CPU is being praised by lots of users and media outlets. But have you ever asked yourselves the question, how much has really improved between the 13900K and its predecessor 12900K? This quick and dirty comparison will shed some light on this matter. Should you really even be thinking about upgrading? First, let's take a quick look at the price. In January 2023, you can get the new 13900K for about 600 to 620 US dollars. The predecessor 12900K, on the other hand, can already be had for 420 to 500 dollars, depending on your luck. Cores and threads. A 13900K in total offers 24 cores and 32 threads. 8 RP cores, the remaining ones are 16 E cores. A 12900K, on the other hand, comes with 16 cores and 24 threads. We are seeing exactly 8 P cores here too, but only 8 E cores. Specifications Both CPUs go into the LGA 1700 socket and can, for instance, be run on motherboards with either Z790 or Z690 chipsets. Those, however, that want to run the more recent 13900K model on a Z690 board will have to go through a BIOS update beforehand. Aside from that, there are certainly noteworthy improvements in clock speeds, at least on paper. The TDP in theory at least also appears to have gone up, but practically we're about to see slightly more shocking results here. Test setup. For the 13900K Raptor Lake CPU, I'm going with the ASRock Z790 Tai Chi motherboard. The 12900K Aller Lake model I've installed into the Gigabyte Z690 Gaming X DDR5 board. For the Raptor Lake system, I'm sticking with my usual Kingston Fury Beast RGB 32GB DDR5 6000MHz CL36 RAM. Whereas for the Aller Lake system, I went with a comparable kit, namely the G-Skill Trident Z5 32GB DDR5 6000 MHz memory, also with CL36 timings. As for the graphics card, it's the ASUS RTX 3090 TUF Gaming OC taking on its duty. The rest of the test system is fully identical. Clock speeds. When leaving all settings at stock ones, basically the ones that are dictated by the motherboard's auto settings, we're immediately seeing a medium to larger jump in clock speeds. A 13900K at full load manages noticeably higher clocks on its P and E cores. An even bigger jump can be witnessed when it comes to its boost clock. Unfortunately, that happiness doesn't last for long, since as you may know, some motherboards pump more power into Raptor Lake CPUs than actually specified by Intel. If I strictly stick to the official stock Intel specifications and go with a 253 watt power limit, those P-Core clock speeds of the 13900K drop below the ones on its predecessor. In turn, those E-Cores seem to clock much more aggressive though. The boost behavior with these settings remains unchanged, however. Performance, productivity. In the classic Cinebench R23, things are looking promising already, with the 13900K Raptor Lake leading by a whopping 40% over its Alder Lake predecessor. In the single core test, we're looking at a nice 12%, not too shabby either. In the 7-zip benchmark, we become witnesses of an even bigger performance improvement. Here we are talking of a monstrous 47%. This spectacle seems to carry on even in the V-Ray 5 benchmark, Raptor Lake leading over Alder Lake by 42%. So it's less of a surprise that in the Corona benchmark, the 13900K seems to be doing 32% better than the 12900K. Moving on to the Blender test. This is where the new Raptor Lake model is overtaking Alder Lake by 43%. Having arrived at the handbrake encoding test, the 13900K is completing its task by roughly 21% quicker than the 12900K. Now in the video rendering test, Vegas Pro 20, the new model, is about 26% faster than the old one. Really not bad at all. Gaming. 3 Mark Time Spy practically shows identical results, or rather partial nonsense. I don't like it. We see more useful data in Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Here we get to see a nearly 20% higher frame rate 
and the 13900K side. The 1% lows appear to be even 21% higher. Next we dive into Borderlands 3, where we see our smallest gain so far. It's just a mere 7%. Nonetheless, Raptor Lake does deliver 14% better minimum values. We are heading slightly uphill in the game Cyberpunk 2077, in which the 13900K manages 14% more frames per second over the 12900K. 11% higher 1% lows is what we are being greeted with here too. 11% faster on average, Raptor Lake appears to be in the title Far Cry 6. The jump in 1% lows is insane here though, a colossal 48%. Let that sink in for a while. Albeit, Alder Lake seems to be having a few hiccups in Far Cry 6 from time to time. Not that spectacularly, we are moving on to the racing title Forza Horizon 5. A 13900K only offers 6% more FPS over its predecessor, and interestingly, a 12900K is the one that's offering 9% better 1% lows here. I've checked it several times and managed to reproduce these results. GTA 5 is outputting identical results, so we can skip that. Horizon Zero Dawn makes Raptor Lake perform 8% better than Alder Lake. More impressive though is the 10% improvement in the 1% lows department. In the next game, titled Metro Exodus, the 13900K managed a lead of 12% over the 12900K and even beats its predecessor in terms of minimum values, and that's by 27%. Raptor Lake is able to overtake Alder Lake with an 11% higher frame rate in the Western game Red Dead Redemption 2. Those 1% lows have improved by even roughly 14%. Rise of the Tomb Raider shows a 6% FPS gain. We are talking 8% when glancing over to the minimum FPS. And the final game title for today, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the 13900K is doing 4% better than the 12900K, but is almost 7% better in terms of 1% lows. Gaming average FPS. We get to see a very clear picture here. A 12900K undoubtedly is offering us extremely good gaming performance, but is being beaten by its successor, 13900K, by 8% on average. An even more impressive performance improvement is witnessable in the 1% lows, of course. We are talking of a gain of over 12%. Power consumption and temperatures. Here, things don't look as nice anymore. At first glance, the power draw might be a little shocking to say the least. After all, the 13900K at its auto settings, specified by the motherboard, unfortunately consumes 52% more power than the 12900K does, that was already considered inefficient to start with. So if we are going strictly with the official Intel power limit by entering those manually within the BIOS, we are now seeing only a 30% higher power draw over its predecessor. Not perfect either, but then again, we are also being offered quite a bit more raw performance, especially in productivity workloads. Due to the higher core count on that Raptor Lake processor, we are additionally seeing a rather not so pleasing 37% higher idle power draw as well. On the other hand, the core count increased from 16 to 24, that's 50%. That could be used as a counter argument. Now when taking a look at the temperatures, we quickly need to come to the realization a 13900K in whichever configuration is not that easily cooled. It's even harder to cool than its predecessor 12900K. 100 degrees Celsius at auto settings are pretty extreme and certainly questionable. Luckily, 88 degrees are somewhat fine thanks to the enforced 253 watt Intel power limit. Even though the temperatures are still to be considered as fairly high, no doubt. Conclusion. So as you all have seen, there's actually a pretty noteworthy improvement here from one Intel generation to another something we weren't really used to for quite a long time now. Aside from the high power consumption and not so attractive temperatures, the 13900K is clearly offering substantially more performance than the 12900K. Especially in the aspect productivity, the performance is greatly improved thanks to the higher core count and clock speeds. 
those that do lots of rendering and coding and the like basically make a living with that, therefore could play with the thought of upgrading to the new Raptor Lake model. The gamers among you, as tempting as those FPS gains may appear, should be a little more cautious though. If you're asking me, moving from the 12900K to the 13900K solely for games is not worth it. Especially since more often than not, you're not even playing at full HD 1080p but at higher screen resolutions anyway. Of course, that's a decision you have to make on your own at the end of the day. I don't want to force feed you my opinion after all. With that said, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.